Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it and hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm going to talk about the dodge and burn filter in Luminar today and that's because A, it's a great filter and B, I don't know why, but I haven't really ever talked about it. Uh, when it uh, was first added to Luminar, I was pretty excited because it is a great tool and a great uh, you know, sort of filter to have at your fingertips. But I have to admit, I haven't used it a whole lot and I, and I don't recall really ever talking about it in videos. So I'm going to talk about how I control exposure and light using that filter. But also, there's some other ideas I use as well. I'm going to share those. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, okay, so I have this photo here. I'm going to go ahead and grab Dodge and Burn, which is under the professional category. And all Dodge and Burn does is it basically allows you to brush in selectively um, either a darken adjustment or a lighten adjustment. And so all you do is you get the filter and you click on Start Painting. And when you do, you have light in here or you have darken, and you can also hit the X key to jump between those. Um, and then you've got to erase, so if you wipe over something and say, oh crap, I didn't mean to do that, you can erase it. Um, here is where you choose the size of your brush, and here's where you choose the strength of the adjustment. Whether you're lightening or darkening, uh, you choose the strength of that adjustment right there. Um, and then for some reason, if you've done a whole bunch of stuff and decide, you know, hey, this sucks, I hate it, just hit reset and it's all gone and you're back to your base photo. So let me go ahead and jump into this. Now, the first thing I want to say is I actually edited this photo in Luminar a few months ago and I had it laying around and um, I've decided it's a good example or a good photo to use as, as an example for what I'm talking about. So I actually previously did some color stuff and all that in Luminar, uh, but I, I should have used Dodge and Burn and I didn't. So we're going to use it right now. So the first thing I want to do is get that sky under control because it's really too dark. And now I've already played with this uh, prior to recording this video, so I know I'm going to go ahead and go to 100 on this sky, and I'm going to go ahead and paint in that darken adjustment into the sky and that upper section of the photo. And so the thing is, um, as you can see, that doesn't make the sky dark enough for me in this photo. So. Um, I would almost never, in fact, this is the only time I've ever gone to 100% strength on um, the lighten or darken adjustment with Dodge and Burn because it's very rare that I would need to do that. As I said, I've never done it before. Uh, but in this case, it was absolutely necessary to get a little bit better control over that sky. And truthfully, it's not even enough. So I'll show you another trick that I like to use for that in a moment. Um, I usually start around 20 you know, 20 to 25 percent strength on the uh, on the brush, whether I'm lightening or darkening, and just to see what it looks like. Maybe depending on what it is, maybe as low as 15 or as high as 30, depending on how intense I think it's going to be. But I definitely start low because you can always just do more and more and build onto it. So um, there we go. Now I've darkened that at strength of 100. Here's another thing you probably uh, you may not know, and that is you can now change this percent to something else. I'm going to change it to about 20. And I'm going to go paint it into the water. I'm going to right bracket key to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to paint it into the water. And it's a fairly subtle adjustment, uh, just a little bit. Um, but you can do this again and again and again with the same instance of dodge and burn. I've only got the filter one time in my filter workspace. However, I can use it repeatedly, 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 right? You get the point, um, without having to go get the filter each time. So. I've done a couple of bits of darken. I've got one more little bit of darken I want to do, and that's going to be right over here. Um, in fact, I'm going to go a little bit higher. So I just change the strength. I'm going to go to, let's say, 25, and just kind of darken that bit of ground there, maybe a little bit of that rock. And that's simply because I don't want to be uh, have that too bright because the brighter stuff is probably going to attract the viewer's eye. And I don't really care about the viewer's eye looking at the side of the photo. I'm more interested in the anchoring element at the bottom and the flow of the water. So speaking of the anchoring element, I want to brighten those rocks. And so 50% um, is probably a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. So um, it's actually, I think, working here. So um, I think that's pretty good. And in fact, um, I think that big rock here is uh, plenty bright enough. But the other ones, I'm going to go to like 70 just to see if I can get a you know a little bit more out of these guys, uh, and I think that'll do it. Uh, and so there we go. I mean that's um, that's that. So let me hit done, and now I can say there's the before and there's the after. I think we're already getting a different picture, which is obviously the point. Now if I wanted to come back and do more, I could just hit start painting again and come back into the filter and keep going. I don't want to. I'm going to show you another trick, and that is I like to use the exposure slider. And in this case, I just need to 
uh, darken the sky quite a bit. So I'm gonna do like 1.7 or something, something like that. And I'm gonna grab uh, the gradient mask and I'm just gonna drop a gradient right here. Oops, there we go. Something like that. All right, and boom. Now let me show you what that did. There's the before, and that was with 100% darken on Dodge and Burn. So the sky was blown out. It was it was a long exposure. I got the water looking the way I wanted, but the sky just, uh, you know, didn't really work out. So we're fixing that, and I think we're getting there. Um, actually, we're not quite getting there because um, I think I've got a little bit there in the trees. I need to have a better control over it. There we go. So I think that looks better. So let me show you one more time without it and with it. Okay, I think we're in better shape. Now, uh, here's where I just add a couple more filters for, for fun, if you will. The first fun bit of uh, fun that I'm gonna have is golden hour. And I'm just gonna give that like a 20 or so. I just wanna pop it up a little bit. I wanna accentuate sort of the colors in the sky and that sunset, give the uh, photo a little bit more oomph. And I think golden hour does that. I'm not gonna touch the saturation, but just bumping up the amount, I think does a good job. There's the before and there's the after. So I think we're looking good. And then the last, uh, well, it's not really a trick, but the last thing I wanna do is saturation and vibrance. And I gotta look at my notes here. Okay, so I'm gonna do like negative 40 something uh, on saturation with a bump in vibrance. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the gradient mask, but just in the bottom. Uh, and so really what I wanna do here is I wanna keep from uh, having too much saturation in those rocks. Uh, they were picking up a lot of blue, so let me show you the before. I'm gonna turn off. You can see how colorful those rocks are, and the rocks really shouldn't be that blue. So I wanted to tone that down a little bit, and there we go. Now I might would, hang on, let me, let me do something here. Yeah, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to the brush mask, and I'm gonna show the mask. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase it at about a 50% opacity um, over this bigger rock. And the reason is because there's a little bit of golden color in there and I kind of like it. Uh, so that's something you can do is, is go back and fix your mask uh, using the brush, right? So there's the before and there's the after. I got rid of, uh, rid of a lot of that blue, but I brought back a little bit of that golden hour touch on the top of that big rock, which I think looks cool. Now this is a point where I'd probably say I'm done, right? So there's the before and there's the after. We use dodge and burn in the sky, we use it on the side. Hang on, I didn't finish dodge and burn. I'm gonna say start painting, I'm gonna say lighten. I gotta get 70 way down. I gotta go to about 20. And I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller. And I just wanna lighten this side here. And this is for my last step in the photo. And the reason I lighten that is because I'm gonna do something and some of you are gonna be mad. You're gonna say, Jim, don't do it, but I'm gonna do it. And that is, I'm gonna get the sun rays filter. Everybody loved it. It was like, you know, the head cheerleader of the new filter crop. Everybody was excited. And then um, everybody got sick of it. Um, but it's still a cool filter, man. It's freaking really cool. So I'm gonna use it here. Let me, I gotta look at my notes to see what I'm supposed to do because I can't remember these things. I got about a 12 and a 25. I think that's about right. And what I wanna do, I lighten that side of the, the hill because I want some of the light from the sun to be popping in there. I gotta look at my notes and see what I did. Okay, that actually stays about there. The look is coming down quite a bit. Uh, so I'm taking that down. The number is going down as well. Okay, the length is going up quite a bit. In fact, it's going way up. And the warmth is, what is the warmth doing? The warmth is staying there. Okay, so I think we're good there. Now the sun itself, this would be the actual ball of a sun ray, and that is gonna be, let's see, that's about the same. This comes down significantly. Sorry guys, I just gotta look at this so that I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'll be right back to you, don't go anywhere. Uh, let's see, I'm doing about a 15 or a 14 there, and a 30 there. Okay, then penetration is gonna be about that, and randomize is gonna be about that. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the brush and I'm gonna say erase, and I'm gonna erase any sun from coming over here and hitting that side. And just a personal preference, that's it. And there you go, I got a little bit of sun ray business, maybe a little too much. Um, you know, I might take the amount down a little bit. Um, I might take the ray, uh, where it is, uh, the number of rays down a little bit more, diffuse it a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. I can show you there's the before sun rays, and there's after. 
you notice when you take the look down, it actually darkens the photo a little bit, right? So uh, let me show you that. Oops, um, look. See how it's brighter there because it's like more sun. So when I take the look down, it's kind of darkening. And so it gives a little bit of moodiness. The point is really about controlling the light. And I added some light with sun rays, but I'm still controlling the light with the exposure filter and the gradient mask. And then also, of course, dodge and burn. So let me show you before. That was my final finished photo prior to getting in it tonight. And there it is now. Uh, quite a bit different, a bit more saturated. To me, a bit moodier. It looks and feels more like a sunset photo as opposed to that. And it actually was sunset. It was like 8 at night or whatever it was. Um, and I was standing there at the edge of the river and just happy as can be, to be honest. Um, but that's a lot more sunsetty. And even if you don't like the sun rays, you know, you can turn that off. I still think you got a nice looking sunset image. So that's what I do. Now, I'm going to do one more photo. I'm going to try to do this quick. And this is something I shared recently. It's an HDR from London, fully processed in Aurora HDR and then Luminar. But I want to do a little bit of dodge and burn here and uh, show you a couple of things. So let me get dodge and burn. And let's see here. Uh, start painting. And I'm going to go darken. And I think I'm going to do about uh, 40. And I'm going to go a little bit over here, a little bit over there. And if you can see, right, I'm not brushing right now with the uh, with the darken filter, but if you can see there's light coming off there and there's light coming off here. So I'm going to go darken this stuff over here and kind of trace around that so that I can accentuate that light a little bit. I still want the light to be spilling onto the pavement, so I don't want to darken all of that. I just kind of want to darken around some of that spillage and create a little bit moodier look to the photo. And um, there we go. I mean, that's kind of what I was talking about. There's the before and there's the after. So I sort of followed the shape or the contour of that light, how it's splashing on the pavement. And that's one of the cool things about Dodge and Burn. You can just brush it in wherever you want. But I forgot, I'm not done. Um, I also need to brush it into the sky. So let me do that real quick. And it was nighttime, as you can see. I think that's fairly obvious. Um, but the way I edited this, I made it a lot more blue hour looking, which I love blue hour. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go back and make it night again. Um, so here we go. We're kind of getting this darker night kind of sky look. Um, and I don't know how even my brushing is. I sort of have the feeling it's going to be kind of uneven. But um, there we go. So I've created more of a darkness, a, a, a nighttime look. Um, now I want to do a couple things and I got to find my notes. Um, the first thing I want to do is get the exposure slider. I'm going to get it twice. I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to get golden hour again as well. So, okay, for the first, close that. Okay, exposure. Now, the first thing I want to do here is um, I want to brighten up this lady on the bench. I think, to me, that's one of the focal elements in the photo, uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to bump this up, and if you just look at her, I just kind of stop when I get somewhere that I like, and I like that. So there we go, and this time I'm going to get the radial mask. And if you haven't used a radial mask, it says you click and drag to draw a circle. So I'm just going to click right in the middle and then drag outward from there. Now, it shows up backwards, basically. So you got to go to exposure and you got to go to mask and you got to go to invert. And there you go. So there's that. Let me show you the before and after. If you just look at this section right here, let me show you before, darker around her, and after, a lot brighter, right? So it looks kind of cool. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it for this wagon. And this time, I'm just going to look at the wagon until I get it about where I want it, which is about right there. And once again, I'm going to click on the brush, and I'm going to get the radial mask. And I'm going to click right in the center of that and drag. And then I'm going to shape this guy a little bit uh, just to cover the area better. Mo better. Let's see here. Something about like that. And then once again, I'm going to go to uh, the mask, and I'm going to hit invert. And there we go. That's probably a little too bright. It looks a little bit unnatural, so I'm going to take that down a little bit. Um, I'm also going to make it bigger. Oops. So let me just stretch that a little bit. Um, I think something like that. So there we go. Now let me show you the before and after of that filter. There's the before. It's pretty much dark. And there's the after. It's much brighter. A little too bright. I think I'll take it down a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to be like, hey, look, I obviously shined a spotlight on this thing, and I might still have that a little bit too bright, so it might be looking a bit obvious. 
The point is use radial mask and the exposure filter or gradient mask like I did in the previous photo to control the light just like you do with dodge and burn. But instead of brushing it in, you can use the, the masking, you know, the gradient or the radial mask tools. Um, with golden hour, I'm just going uh, straight 30 across the board. And if you look at it, all it's doing, it's warming up the bright spots of the photo. And that's kind of what golden hour does. So if you, let me turn that off. All this light's coming off this building and all this light is around this wagon and this lady on the bench spilling onto the cobblestones. It looks cool, but I want it to look, oops, I'm turning off the exposure slider. Um, I want to warm it up a little bit and make it more of a golden light. So now it's really shining on the wagon and looking awesome. It shines on that lady. And I think, you know, I think we've made a much different looking photo. I don't know if it's any better, but it's different, right? So let me show you the before. I brightened that one quite a bit. Some of that was HDR and then me just making it more of a blue hour look instead of an evening look. And here I made it a much more of an evening look. Uh, looks like I didn't really get the sky very even here. That's just brushing with dodge and burn. You can go back and redo that if you like. But that's how it works. I just wanted to show you dodge and burn because it's really powerful. And also consider using the exposure slider with different masking types. You could brush it in. You could use a uh, radial mask. You can use a gradient mask. But it does the same thing, which is help you control the light by either brightening or darkening specific parts of the image. And that's how you control the light in Luminar. Hope that helps. I appreciate it. If you like the video, like the video, share with your friends, do all that kind of fun stuff. And then I'll see you real soon, my friends. I appreciate you stopping by. Take care and adios.